right, Bob. Vibe check. Vibe check is awesome. Vibe check is very good because I think what we're looking at is the real deal. I think last year as a fan, I felt like I was watching a team that was sort of taped together. I mean, the rotation was blown up right out of the gates. 24 pitches for James Paxton. He's done for the season. Everybody got hurt along the way. Justin Dunn, Sheffield, Marco. It was just a hodgepodge of, of pitchers and the hitting was well below average, yet they pieced together a 90-win season. But you kept feeling like, am I seeing, a is this the real thing? When is it going to fade? When is the bottom going to drop out of it? Whereas I look at this team and I feel like they are who they are. We're looking at a first place Mariners team who can put up a bunch of runs, who's got solid starting pitching and a solid bullpen. And it, it feels like they haven't even come close to reaching their potential yet because you've got a number of guys in that offense that A, haven't been there because of COVID, obviously with Mitch Haniger, Luis Torrens, people like that. You're missing Seawald, you're missing Sadler, you're missing Sergio Romo in the bullpen, yet you're achieving all of, the, all of this success without them. So it feels like we're watching the real product that hasn't even come close to reaching its potential yet. Here's a real tough question. Who's the Mariners player of the week? That'd be Ty France with a very close second, J.P. Crawford. I feel like what we're watching with both of these guys is special. And I don't expect, you know, 375 and 341, whatever J.P.'s hitting at this point, to continue. But the fact that they've gotten off to such a tremendous start is what has helped them sort of overcome the loss or the absence of Mitch Haniger and the absence of Luis Torrens to a lesser extent and, and the ability to sort of compensate for what you're not getting out of the rest of the lineup. I mean, Kelnick is still trying to find it. Jesse Winker is still trying to find it, find some luck with, in his case. Uh, but the, the, the pace that those guys are on and the consistency has really allowed this offense to continue. And it, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch, man. This one's courtesy of our friend James Boy Howdy Osborne. What one pitch from a Mariners pitcher would you least likely want to face? Munoz. Munoz. I don't even know that I would step in the box just to look at it, much less offer at it. I would 103 miles an hour. I feel like you wouldn't even see it. You would just hear it. You would just feel the breeze. So that's frightening. That's frightening. I know he's got control and he hopefully wouldn't plunk me. But but yeah, that would be terrifying. 103 miles an hour. Munoz, hands down. Another friend of ours, Justin Barnes, he wants to know, what Mariners player would you go on a road trip with? Sergio Romo. Yeah, that dude, I, I got to tell you, when, he, when they signed him, I'm going, okay, what is he, 39 years old, what's he got left? He'll bring some wisdom, but I'm not really counting on him in terms of production and being that rock because I, I just think for baseball, he's, he's probably toward the end. I watched an interview with him and I, I fell in love with the guy. I just said, this guy is so cool. He's got such a great perspective. He is wildly interesting. And he had a smile from ear to ear the entire time he was speaking. He just seems like he's good people. He'd be a good guy to, to sit in a car with and just talk about life and, and sports and music and whatever's going on. I'm going to Twitter now. Jared Galanti asks, what's your biggest concern through two weeks? Biggest concern? two of them. Cal Raleigh looks really lost at the plate. I, know, I think he's only had like 22 at-bats, so I'm not, you know, I'm not throwing judgment out there that he, oh, he's, he's got to go down to AAA, he's terrible, but he, he looks like he's really struggling to find it at the plate. Uh, I, I still would like to see him get more turns up there, see if he can develop a rhythm, because I think he's clearly the best defensive catcher they've got. I love who he is behind the plate. Um, and number two, He's a young guy, it's only been a couple of starts, but Brash has got to figure out his control. He's walked 10 guys in his last two starts, only went four and a third in the last start. He's got to cut down on the traffic on the base pass. He's got to find a way to get some level of command. He's got such a great arm, he's got great stuff, but man, you, you can't afford to have that much traffic and rely on the defense to bail you out the way they have uh, in a couple of instances. So. Not a huge concern. Again, young guy, you don't expect him to carry the, the rotation, but boy, you, you, want him to, you want him to stay in the game long enough to not crush your bullpen and keep the game competitive. And that, that level of walking, that pace of, of walking batters is gonna come back to bite you. All right, they're uh, starting a road trip in Tampa Bay tomorrow. Who's your pick to click for the whole road trip? Ah, for the whole road trip. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off the, the obvious would be Ty France or J.P. Crawford. I think Winker, after that game-winning hit, 
in the battles he had at the plate in as many pitches as he saw and as much as he's been squaring the ball up and just had bad luck. Uh, he's got an on-base percentage of 338. He's walked 15 times, so he's he's seeing the pitches. You know, he, he's got a command of the strike zone. So I think this is where finally getting that monkey off your back, so to speak, and, and battling the way he did in those last two at-bats and coming up with a game winner, I'm going with Winker.